Can you, can you hear me? Hi, 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 hi. Every, everyone. <laughs> hi, hi, ha, hi, hi. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Hey, Robert. Hey, Klabinski. Roman Poyo. Hi, hi. Elder Gaming. Sweet, 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 sweet. Hello, everyone. Pedro, hi. And this I cannot pronounce, I'm afraid. But hi. Hey, Martin. Hey, Gert. Hey, Void. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much. Hi, 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 hi. That's good. That's great. Hey everyone, good evening or good afternoon, wherever you are. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is someone singing on the street. <laughs> um, hey, thank you. Drums, please. Hey everyone, I am drinking wa wa water. Water. Water, not small water, but just water. So, hey everyone, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for joining today. Today, I thought we can do something a bit different. Thanks so much, thanks so much. A bit different today. Uh, I thought about making something a bit more beginner friendly. Um, so I will spend a bit more time explaining things when I uh, think that I know something. <laughs> um, explaining what I'm doing, explaining things, how they work. And I will try also to make simple things, I guess. Hey, Storm Elder. Um, simple things, I guess. No more wine. No, no more wine, uh, I'm afraid. No wine. I drink now just water and we will see how it goes. Cheers, Void. Yeah, so uh, anyway, I will explain things a bit more. So I will spend more time explaining things, I hope. I don't know. That's the plan at least. And I will try to use uh, more or less so-called basic modules. So I will use mostly, hopefully mostly, um, the VCV modules, the fundamental modules, which are amazing. And not so basic, but they are, uh, I think, easy to understand. And my whole goal here is to show you also that it's not about the modules. I mean, of course, there are some modules that it is about the modules, but most of the basics, I mean, it's not about the modules, it's about the idea behind the modules. And I hope to make this something a bit more beginner friendly. I hope that I can do something like this and I will not be too confusing and confused. We will see. Hi, Bill. Tune, boys. Um, yeah, so what I have here, uh, I have just uh, my small template here. I have the mixer, the mind and mixer, which I cannot uh, patch without. It just, it makes everything uh, easier. I treat it uh, as a sort of a end point to everything. And I have a sand reverb. I have plateau as the sand reverb. So I don't have to use so many reverbs in the patch. And that's about it. And I have, of course, the MB module from Stormender, so I can have a nice big browser that everyone can see. Hey, Matt. Hi, hi. Hey, Madrid. Hola. Hola. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So I think we will start. I don't know. I thought I would start with something a bit uh, simple. Uh, I thought about a subtractive voice. We can start with a subtractive voice. I have here down the trusty key step. So I can, uh, I found it easier to uh, make sound design, create sound design, create sounds with the keyboard first and then apply it to a sequence. So this is how we will start. I think we will start with a subtractive voice. Start with the basics. And we will see where it will take us. So let's start with an oscillator. And an oscillator, and again, I'm sorry uh, if you are, if it's it's boring for you, I'm really sorry, but I am going to try and explain 
I'm going to try and explain a bit more uh, things in this live stream. So I'm going to start with the oscillator, the VCO1. Can you in the chat tell me what VC stands for? <laughs> stands for. <laughs> so the VCO1 is an oscillator. Um, and an oscillator will generate oscillations, will generate movement. And I can show you this also on the scope. The scope will be our lovely friend. Again, I'm sorry if it's boring for you, if you are not a beginner and uh, it's boring, but this stream is uh, dedicated more or less uh, for beginners. So, um, but we will, uh, you know, we will uh, continue. So I'm waiting still, what is VC, what uh, does VC stand for? Hi. So it will create oscillations. Now with the VCO1, we have a few voltage controlled, really nice. We have a few different outputs. We have a few different um, wave outputs. We have the sine wave, and I will show you this also on a frequency analyzer. We have the sine wave, which is more or less a very pure waveform. We can also listen to it. Uh, if I can connect it right. Pum, 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 pum. <coughs> Right, so we have sine wave, and you can see here, you can see here on the analyzer, voltage controlled. We can see here on the uh, um, analyzer, this shows us the frequency spectrum or the different frequencies of this wave. We can see that there are quite um, only a few um, what's the so-called harmonics or overtones, which means that this waveform is more or less... Um, what is the opposite of bright? It's not so bright. Um, this is the sine wave. We have also a triangle wave, which will be a bit brighter. And you can see um, that it's a bit more spiky. And the more spikier the waveform, the more harmonics we will get, as you can see here. And the brighter it will sound. And we have also a sawtooth. And a sawtooth, I will have to take down the levels a bit. And a sawtooth, you can see already, it's even spikier. And you can see all of the overtones that we have, all of the different harmonics, which means that this sound is very, very bright. And we have the square wave or the pulse wave. And now I have a question, another question for you in the chat. Dal, yeah, exactly. What is the difference between a pulse wave and a square wave? So here it says square. In this case, it is a square wave. And you can see that it has even more edges, which means that it has, it's also quite bright. And as I mentioned, we will start with a subtractive voice, with subtractive synthesis. And the whole, uh, the whole purpose, uh, the whole idea behind subtractive synthesis or subtra uh, building a subtractive voice is to start with a harmonically rich sound so an harmonically rich uh, wave or sound never mind what uh, this and subtract harmonic subtract overtones subtract the harmonic content from it so as i said we are using a we are using a harmonically rich waveform Yes, uh, Roman Poyo, 50-50. So uh, the difference between, I will show you this with a digital wave. Uh, the difference between a pulse wave and a square wave. A square wave is a pulse wave. But a pulse, not, so all, uh, 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 <laughs> all square waves are pulse waves, but not all pulse waves are square waves. So a square wave will be a square wave only when it spends the same, the same time it spends the same time um, above zero and the same time below zero. So the duty cycle, the pulse width is even on both negative and the positive um, pulse. And a pulse wave will look something like this. This is now not a square wave anymore. It's a pulse wave. Eight minutes of ads before a live stream? Oh man, I'm sorry. This is uh, YouTube. Um, so now it's a pulse wave because you can see it spends less time up on the positive pole than down on the negative pole. So this is the difference between square wave and a pulse wave. So what we will do, we will start either with a saw wave or a pulse wave or a pulse or square. And we will see where it takes us. Now how we take um, harmonic content, how we subtract harmonic content 
form a voice because again we want to start with subtractive synthesis with a subtractive voice and this we will do with the VCF and I asked before what does VC stands for O stands for oscillator F stands for filter but VC stands for voltage controlled which means that this oscillator will not only generate oscillations it will also um, give us the opportunity or give us the chance to um, control it with voltage and we can control different aspects of this oscillator with voltage. We can control the pitch or the frequency, which is more or less the same. We can control again the frequency. We can um, control the pulse width and we can sync it. Maybe we'll speak about sync later. We can co control the pulse width. With the filter, we can control the frequency of the filter. We can control the resonance, which is more or less something like a feedback. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> And we can control the drive. So VC stands for voltage controlled, which means that we can control the different aspects of the modules with voltage. And this is more or less the main thing with modular because synthesis is synthesis and sy is synthesis. And what we are dealing here is not necessarily with modular synthesis, but synthesis in a modular environment. And a big part of it is a big and a big part of it is a uh, control voltage uh, with that amount of ads before last time check the copyright claims from trolls uh, totally eight minutes man i'm really sorry for that really sorry um yeah so this was what you so how we subtract again i will add the uh, analyzer maybe you can see this on the scope again i'm sorry if it's boring if you're not a beginner but this is the saw wave that we saw before I switch now to digital, so it's a bit uh, cleaner. It's a bit more uh, mathematic, I guess. Okay, and ooh. Um, so this is the saw wave uh, right out of the box. And now I will send this saw wave through a low pass filter. The low pass filter will let the low frequencies pass and will subtract, attenuate, will reduce the level of the high frequencies. So have a look, this is the pink trace here on the analyzer and it will be also the pink trace here on the scope. You can see that we get quite a different result. Let's listen to this also. Mm, let's see, I ate too much for dinner, I'm sorry. <laughs> now it's quite uh, soft because there, are, there is not so much contact going through. So now with the frequency of the filter I can control the cut off point where the filter will cut off the frequencies in this case because it's a low pass it will let the low frequencies pass and will cut will attenuate will subtract the high frequencies right now a common question about filters is why when I use a filter it will reduce the levels also and, and that's exactly the reason because it will attenuate the levels of the frequencies above or below the cutoff point depends if you're using low pass band pass high pass and whatnot so it will reduce the level and this is why you get also reduction in amplitude and this is more or less the basics the fundamentals the most uh, basic idea of subtractive synthesis you start with a harmonically rich waveform you can see here the green trace on the analyzer and you subtract frequencies from it in this case we will use a low pass that will let the low frequencies pass and you can see the pink trace this is the result we get and you can hear it also hopefully low pass Lopez, Lopez filter. All right, so this is basically the basics um, of subtractive synthesis. Now, what we, what we will do after the VCF, after the filter, let's disconnect it from here and maybe also disconnect it from the mixer. So what we will do after the filter, I will want somehow to control the amplitude of this voice over time. I don't want it to drone. Maybe you, you want, in this case, I don't want it to drone. I want to be able to play it with my keyboard. So a uh, tool for that is the VCA. Now the VCA, this is tricky and I want to hear your opinion on it in the chat. A VCA, if I hover here above the VCA from VCV, it says voltage controlled amplifier. Now, if you think about it, 
this module, if we will look at it also, and I will show you this also on the scope, I will just take a sine wave. And the pink trace, the pink trace will be the original, um, original sine wave, and the blue trace will be the sine wave after the VCA. So it says voltage controlled amplifier, but but in this case it will not amplify anything. If it would amplify, it means that the signal after the VCA should be we will have the option to amplify to get it above its original state. In this case, never mind how much I push it up, it will not amplify anything. So in this case, I like to call this VCA voltage controlled attenuator, but but you can call it an amplifier, it doesn't uh, matter, but just understand the idea that there are some, in my, in my opinion, there are most, most VCAs are not amplifying anything, they are just attenuating, which means that next time, next time you see, for example, it, it's on the neutron, there is a VCA, and there is a, uh, an attenuator with a CV input, which are basically the same thing. So you have on the neutron two VCAs and not one. Exactly. So negative amplification. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, um, the thing, the, what's important is, is the end result. And the end result is that it's attenuating. I mean, it's reducing the level. This is what it's doing. Uh, so if you think about it, and if you look at other scenes, ex again, I'm uh, mentioning the neutron, for example. Uh, a lot of people don't um, realize that there are two VCAs on the neutron and not only one. So you can actually, if you know the neutron, you can actually have two different independent voices there because you have two envelopes and you have two VCAs. If, so what if it's called an attenuator with a CV input? It's still a VCA. So now, I oh, what's going on here? So now I will use this VCA again to control the level, the amplitude of this voice that I'm building. Again, a subtractive voice over time. So I'm going to, to use the low pass output to the VCA and from the VCA to the mixer. And now, if I open it a bit, now I can control the amplitude. And again, the VCA has the VC part, which is voltage controlled, voltage controlled, which means that we can control it with voltage. And something, a very basic module that is being used a lot with VCAs is an envelope generator. Now an envelope generator will uh, generate CV over time um, that it will act as a sort of an envelope for the amplitude of this voice that we are using. So for example, if I will show you this in the scope, and now don't pay attention to what I'm doing here with this module that I'm going to add this. I'm going to use this module here just to show you how the envelope works, just so I can get it. So the envelope we have in this case ADSR, there are four stages, attack, decay, sustain, and release. Hey, analog kitchen! Do you think how we name the module really matter? As long as the people understand what somebody else is talking about, it's fine, I guess. Well, yes and no. The thing is, again, I'm mentioning the neutron. Uh, it says, one time it says a VCA, and another time it says an attenuator, and it, the attenuator has a CV input. If you would care about the name and you would understand that the VCA, you would understand that the VCA is not necessarily an amplifier, it's also, it's basically an attenuator in most cases, in my opinion, um, then you would understand that you have two VCAs on the neutron and not only one, and you would use it also as a VCA if you would need it. So I think that the names, uh, are, uh, yes, they are not important if you know what you're doing, but if you are new to this, uh, so the names are quite important. And it's not important to know, it's important to understand, I guess. So if you understand that a VCA is not necessarily an amplifier, then you know then you can use also an attenuator with a CV input. That's that's basically what I mean. So again the ADSR module will generate an envelope, a CV or a CV that is running over time and as, uh, that we can use as an envelope for our voice. So if you look here on the scope, we have four stages. We have the attack, which is the time that the envelope goes from zero to maximum. Then we will have the decay time, 
which is the stage that it goes from the attack to the sustain level. And I will come back to this level thing. And we have the release that it goes from the sustain level to back to zero. So again, we have attack zero to maximum. We have decay uh, maximum to sustain level. And we have release, which is from the sustain level to zero. Have a look here, just a second. Let's make this. Okay. So again, we have attack. Now we are in the sustain stage. Decay. Again, attack. Maybe I will make this a bit longer. Let's wait for it. Now we have attack, decay, and now sustain. And it will sustain, just like it says, it will sustain as long as I hold this button. And we'll speak about this button in a second. And the sustain is not time-related. We have attack time, decay time, and release time. But the sustain is not about time, it's about level. So we have the sustain level. Hey, Ice Locus. So we have the sustain level. Again, this, the, this knob here, this control changes time. You can see milliseconds. The decay is time. The release is time, but the sustain is level. And now, it will sustain as long, I said it will sustain as long as I hold this button. This button is generating a gate. And a gate basically is a sort of an on and off signal that will go from zero to maximum and back, back to zero as long as it's open. We uh, use the terms the gate is open or the gate is closed. When it's open, it's in maximum. When it's closed, it's in zero. So if you look here again on the scope, now it's in maximum. Now it's in zero. Now it's at maximum. And I'm still holding the button, now I release, it will go back to zero. So basically this is a gate, and a gate is a pulse to like any other pulse, so you can use it in all sorts of ways. In this case, we will use it um, to gate the envelope. And it's a sort of, a, like it sounds like a gate, it will sort of open a gate that the envelope can follow. And uh, later I will show you also a sort of a, an issue that there are with gates and envelopes. Okay, so again, let's take this envelope and I will send it to the CV input of the VCA. You can see that the VCA directly closed because now it's waiting for CV to open the VCA. So now as long as I hold this button, it will go to the attack stage, decay stage, and then will stay at the sustain level, again level, as long as I hold the button. Now this is the sustain level, and now when I will let go, it will go in the, to the release stage, and it will go back to zero, right? If I have the attack all the way to zero, or one millisecond in this case, and I will have a longer decay, so the voice will directly come in, maybe with a sort of a click also because it's so quick, then it will decay slowly into the sustain level or sustain stage, and then I will have also a longer release, and let's have a look at this also on the scope. Longer decay. Now sustain level, now I will let go and it will slowly release. So now we can start using the key step. Hey, Adri, filtering a sine wave? Um, well, in this case, uh, with the analog, if I will show you the analog version of the sine wave on the analyzer, you can see that there are a few harmonics here. So yes, you can filter it if you want. And, if, oh, and even if it's a digital one, you can still filter it and it will just be like a volume control which is also helpful sometimes. Um, for example, with hardware, it's quite fun to use filters as volume control. I mean, in VCV, you can just add more uh, VCAs, but... Uh, is it possible to use square wave for triggering? Yes. As I mentioned, the gate, if you look here on the scope, a gate, a gate is nothing but a pulse. Now, there is a difference because this pulse is it's called unipolar which means that it uh, it lives only on one pole only in this on this case on the positive pole and the square wave if we look at the square wave you can see that it lives on both poles which means that this is a bipolar signal 
This line here is the zero, and here we have a bipolar thing. So there is a difference, but yes, you can use pulse waves as uh, gates and as triggers even, um, because, and it depends on the module you want to gate or to trigger. Usually, the, for example, if you want to use a square wave, and we will use it later, to trigger um, a sequencer, for example. So it depends on the sequencer, how the sequencer reacts to incoming triggers. Most of them in VCVRAC will react to positive one volt. As soon as a signal goes above one volt, it will consider it as a trigger. So yes, you can use, you can use um, square waves for triggering and you can use triggers as pulse waves. And this maybe we'll see also later. Aha. So now I can use my trusty key step to play this voice. Again, I want to start with creating a subtractive voice and then we will apply it to a sequence and we will continue from there. And again, this live stream, if you are just joining us now, this live stream is mostly dedicated for beginners. Um, of course, I hope at least this is the plan that this uh, uh, video will stay also online later on so you can go back and watch it. And please, please feel free to ask any question in the chat. And uh, this is what this stream is all about. Okay, so now I have the MIDI to CV module and I can select my Arturia key step. And now we have two things. Um, we have here the gates, which I can use in this case again to, to gate the envelope. So now uh, if I open the... I'm clicking now the key step. And what I will do, I will change the decay a bit and the release I will take quite down. So which means that when I leave the key, it will also go down. But still I have, I have the sustain level. Why are the edges of the square wave in the scope spiking? This is the square wave of the VC01. This is the square wave. This is how it was modeled. Um, if we look at the different oscillator, let's have a look at the even VCO from the FACO, for example. It also has this. If we look at the VCO from Bog Audio, if I can find it quickly, this one here. Uh, it's a bit less spiky. So it depends on the code, I guess. Hey, Bliftone! It depends on the code in this case. Yeah, this is, uh, you say it's analog, uh, Laurent, but uh, in this case, I'm using the digital version and still it's spiking. So it's about uh, how they coded it. Yeah, I guess, uh, yeah. Okay, so this was the gate. Now let's speak a bit about pitch. We have here what's called the volt per octave input the volt per octave input. And this is interesting because pitch is frequency. And maybe I can show you this. I ju I'm just adding a module again. Don't worry about the module too much. Um, but I'm adding a module here, which is a tuner. And I'm going to send a sine wave to this tuner. And you will see that this is tuned to C4. And C4 is has a frequency of 261.63 Hertz, more or less. Again, I'm going to say this again. Uh, frequency is pitch and pitch is frequency. Um, which means that if we change the pitch of an oscillator, we also change its frequency. Now, volt per octave, basically what it means, um, it's a sort of a standard for Eurorack. That, and it means like this. But why did I get rid of the of the tuner. Let me add just a second another another module or two modules maybe and then I can explain to you exactly what do I mean with volt per octave. So volt per octave means that for each volt we are adding the oscillator will change in an octave. Now adding it can be positive volt and it can be negative volt. You are always adding voltage so you can be that you are adding positive one volt the oscillator will go up an octave. You are adding negative one volt, the oscillator will go down an octave. 
Um, Pennywise, there are amplifiers. There are amplifiers. Um, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm changing the subject for a second, but uh, just to a question. There are amplifiers. For example, the mixer from VCV, it has CV input for each of the channels, and you can amplify. You can see it goes from zero down, but it goes from zero up also to 6 dB. So there are also amplifiers, voltage-controlled amplifiers. And I guess it has something to do also with the circuitry in analog stuff, that there has to be some sort of uh, amplification there, but never mind. Okay, so again, you add one volt, you add positive volt, it goes up an octave, you add negative volt, it goes down an octave. And let's have a look at this. I'm just going to send an um, offset, just static voltage, don't worry about it too much now, to the pitch input, to the volt per octave input, and to a voltmeter. And you will see that when I add one volt, and you will see here, it here on the voltmeter, you will see that it will go from C4 to C5. So let's add one volt more or less, you see, one volt, and it goes to C5. If I add negative one volt, it will go to C3, uh, negative one volt, something. Eh, negative one. C3. All right, so we have negative one, it's C3, positive one, it's C5, which means that for each volt, for each one volt, uh, you add an octave. And this is the whole thing with volt per octave. And basically it means that you change the frequency and it means that you change the pitch. By the way, when I started using VCV rec, um, 2017, three, four years ago, I, instead of saying, I always was uh, confused with volt per octave, instead of saying volt per octave, I said velocity per octave. <laughs> And in my earlier videos, my first videos, you can see, you can hear me say velocity per octave, and I get upset on myself. I'm saying velocity per octave. So this is the standard volt per octave for Eurorack, and because this Eurorack is a Eurorack emulation, it will work the same. So now I can send the volt per octave output to my oscillator and. <laughs> can play my voice so we have ampli ampli amplitude amplitude and we have pitch and we can play the voice with the keyboard so this was um, quickly about volt per octave now I don't need this module here and now we have again a basic subtractive voice we are still not done there is still a lot to do but we have a basic subtractive voice Again, we control our oscillator with voltage, with the volt per octave. We filter it, we subtract harmonics or overtones from this voice. We use an envelope to open a VCA, which controls the level, the amplitude, the volume of our voice. And we can play the voice with our keyboard. Now, another interesting thing in subtractive synthesis, in, in a subtractive voice that you often see, is another envelope that controls the filter. So a separate envelope, usually you will see two envelopes, you will see one envelope for the VCA and one envelope for the filter. So if I add another envelope, another ADSR, I will use the same gates that I'm using to trigger the first envelope, to trigger the second envelope, and this envelope I will use to change the frequency of the filter. Now you will see that I will play and nothing will change. Nothing will change because we uh, need to open what's called an attenuverter in this case, and there are attenuator, attenuverter, uh, yeah, so two things. There, are, there is an attenu, attenuator and an attenuverter. In this case, we have an attenuverter, which means that we can not, not, we can not only attenuate a signal, we can also invert it. And by inverting, I mean we flip the signal, which means that if we look now at the envelope, this is the envelope. This is the original envelope. And now I'm going to invert this envelope. This will be the pink trace. 
We have uh, the mirror of our envelope, and this is basically inverting. When the original, original voltage, original signal goes up, the inverted signal will go down and vice versa. So we can also invert the signal. Let me demonstrate this to you now. So now I will open the attenuator to the, the attenuverter, sorry, to the right, which means that it will open the filter to the right with the envelope. Or I can turn it to the left at any inverter and it will close the filter to the left. Which is also quite interesting. But we will want to open it and we can change. Now we, because we have two different envelopes, we can change. We can change. Do you recommend buying the key step early when building a modular rack or use more modular sequencer? I like... I need, I need a key, I like a keyboard because I like playing also acoustic instruments like piano or different samples. Uh, if this is not your thing, that then you would not really need it. Um, but I like having um, a keyboard and since the Keystep and the Keystep Pro both have CV outputs, also the Bitstep Pro um, CV output, it's really perfect for modular and the Keystep is quite small also. So it's also quite cool. Okay, so now... <laughs> Now, because we have a different envelope for the amplitude and a different envelope for the filter, we can set different parameters. So, for example, for the filter, I can take the sustain down, which means that we get just this. At the beginning, we'll get a brighter sound, but then it will get duller and it will sustain um, with less harmonics. Right, and if I take the sustain up, again, the sustain is the sustain level. Have a look at the VCA, how the level changes. Again, it's not about time, it's about level. So I will take it all the way up. subtractive voice of course there is more to be done and we will do it also so now we get this bite to the sound but it's quickly away and we get a dollar sound now let's have a look at the resonance and drive settings of the filter so the resonance basically will mean sort of a feedback loop at the cutoff point, which means that the resonance, and I can show you this also on the analyzer, the resonance will add a sort of a bump at the cutoff point. So if I have now, what did I do? Did I? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, now. So now I will change the cutoff point and I will add resonance and you will see that we will get a bump. You see this bump here? We get a bump and this will follow the cutoff point and it has a really familiar sound to it. So, uh, Laurent, the uh, 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 Neutron, for example, has two envelopes. I think the Mini Brute also has two envelopes. The Mini Brute too. And I think also the Model D has also two. Hey, you, Rodrigo! Right, so now we have two envelopes, one for the filter, one for the amplitude, one for the level. 
and we have some resonance. Now let's add, let's add some drive, which is we make our sound a bit more. Oh yeah. Using white noise, yeah, that is that is true. I could use noise also to visualize this. Um, hey, hey, this way, this way, this this way. Cheers, Edwin. <laughs> So now we have a classic subtractive voice, but we will add more to this. And what we will add is uh, more oscillators. We will add more oscillators to create a beefier sound. So a lot uh, of uh, what uh, you will find on subtractive synthesizers, two envelopes on the Model D, subtractive synthesizers and subtractive, or such uh, synths that are built after subtractive synthesis, uh, you will see at least, at least two oscillators. And now what we will do, we'll need somehow to mix those oscillators. So I will use the mixer from VCV and we will mix two waveforms. So let's mix a saw wave and a square wave, right? So now I'm mixing those two um, waveforms and I can change the independent level. So let's take the square wave down for a second and send this back to the filter. So we have the same voice. And now we'll start um, raising the levels for the square wave. And now we need to send pitch also to the square wave, so it's not droning, but it's also moving together with the saw. sounds nice this sounds nice right so we can mix two oscillators now the fun begins when you start changing the ratios of the oscillators in all sorts of ways so we are using a square wave we can change the pulse width of the square wave we will modulate it also we'll see this in a second and we can also change the frequency we have also the fine tune here so we can create what's called a, a beat and a bit is just just means basically when two oscillations are not perfectly in phase, are not perfectly in tune, which means that they are a bit slightly out of tune and they will cancel and amplify one another in different um, places and will create this bit sound. You will hear this wow, 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 something like this. sounds nice uh, fretless bass <laughs> yeah so this is basically the beat because they are now a bit slightly out of tune with one another and now let's get into some modulation so let's add a common uh, modulation source you will see on many synthesizers and many subtractive synthesizers and synths and it's quite fun to use in modular also sorry and that's the LFO we have the LFO1 LFO stands for Psychoacoustics Analog Kitchen, exactly, but uh, it's, uh, it's a fun one. LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. Now there is also here, I'm mentioning again the name of the module, Low Frequency Oscillator. I don't like this name. Um, basically because first of all, it's an oscillator like any other. It will generate oscillations, just like we've seen before. We have also here a sine wave, triangle wave, saw wave, and a square wave or a pulse wave. So it's an oscillator like any other oscillator. And 
also the low frequency, it implies that it will go also to low frequencies or it will generate oscillations at a low frequency, at a low rate, but also a low frequency oscillator, at least this one and many others also, can generate oscillations at higher frequencies. Now when I say low frequencies and high frequencies, I separate them at the point that it's called the audio rate frequency. Now the audio rate means um, that they are audible to human ears. Uh, usually, at least when you are um, younger, is the stream be available to watch later? Yes, Rodrigo, it will hopefully, if everything goes well and nothing uh, breaks with YouTube, it will stay. Um, basically, um, uh, it's, you know, it's uh, uh, the common th uh, think way of thinking is that humans can hear from 20 hertz, so 20 cycles per second to 20 kilohertz, 20,000 cycles per second. Um, depends how old you are and, uh, or how um, young you are, but you will not, probably uh, most of us not cannot hear 20,000 hertz anymore. We're about 16 uh, kilohertz or 16 hertz, a uh, thousand hertz. So audio rate means everything below 20 hertz, uh, uh, everything above 20 hertz and not audio rate, below audio rate at low frequencies, which mean, means below 20 hertz. So usually an LFO, if you can see here, now the frequency is two hertz, two hertz we cannot hear, and it will go, of course, to 20 hertz, but it will go also much above 20 hertz, 2024 hertz now 1024 hertz are uh, frequencies that we can hear very well as you can see here and this is why i don't like the name uh, low frequency oscillator so much but there is no other solution to this um, so we'll just stick with uh, an lfo just remember that if you have an lfo you can also use it as an oscillator as a normal audio rate oscillator Modulate the detuning with an ADSR, so you detune over time with a slow attack and you get an old school vibrato. Or is it tremolo? Um, tremolo is about amplitude, about level, and vibrato is about pitch. And we will, uh, we will uh, create also vibrato later. Okay, so now we have this LFO, which means that because it's at low frequencies and we cannot hear it, doesn't mean that it's not useful, but we can use it for modulation. So for example, we can use it to modulate the pulse width of this square wave we are using. We can create this movement. Is it just me or this uh, oscillator sounds really nice? And instead of me moving the knob, we can use the LFO for this. So again, I will send it to the PWM, which stands for Pulse Width Modulation. And again, as you can see, nothing happens. Because in this case, we have an attenuator, a dedicated attenuator. For the filter, we had an attenuverter, so we could also invert the signal. In this case, we have also only, um, only an attenuator, so we can only attenuate it. We cannot invert it, but still it's useful. So I can attenuate this LFO. Create nice movement. dogs left <laughs> is it possible to do polyphonic instead of monophonic yeah we can create a polyphonic all of, all of those modules i'm using now are also polyphonic so we can create also chords with them if we want This is nice. We will create also polyphony later on, maybe. We will see how it goes. Um, okay, so now we have also some modulation for the pulse width. Man, this is nice. Okay, now my question is, shall we create... Um, 
a base shall we create a pad what do you think shall we shall we stay leave this voice as, as it is shall we add to it shall we move shall we move uh, to a different add something else add a sequence maybe we can sequence this yeah here and the midi cv exactly you can choose the uh, how many polyphonic channels you want so maybe we can create a pad out of this what do you say we can create a pad and i can show you also a bit of um, vibrato sebastian thank you so much thank you yes okay let's create a pad out of this let's create a pad out of this a polyphonic pad and i have two uh, other things that i want to add to this um to this voice and then we will create also a bass all right no you know what because we have the modulation no let's leave this at the bass <laughs> i'm sorry let's leave this at the bass because it sounds nice and then now we will sequence it and then we will create a pad right and we will use more modules that we have here and um, before we are sequencing this i want to add another element to the mix and this will be noise And basically noise will um, add texture to the sound. So now I'm using white noise. There are a few different uh, types of noise here. Um, we have many. I can speak a bit, a, bi a bit about white noise, pink noise and red noise. Basically white noise will generate will generate um, a random signal and because it's random it sounds like noise um, because it doesn't have a frequency basically or it doesn't have um, it's not oscillating because it doesn't have the same movement and it will sound like this and basically what we have is the same energy all over the spectrum as you can see here it's more or less the same energy and because there are many more there are many more a uh, high frequencies it sounds very bright and very painful if i get it even higher but then we have pink noise which will be a bit darker as you can see here there is there are more there is more energy in the low frequencies and because of it it will not be as bright sounds a bit like the, the C and red noise which is even darker so what I like to do I like to add white noise to the mix with this uh, bass sound with basses sound in general so now there is no noise and let's add punch to the sound so noise is also really helpful how did you push all of the modules at once um, all of the modules at once you you hold control you hold control uh, on windows at least i don't know if it's command on the mac and you just push them around and you can move multiple modules at once so now we have some some noise some noise for this bass so we created a very simple subtractive <laughs> subtractive voice again subtractive synthesis you start with a rich harmonically rich waveform and you subtract harmonics or overtones from it with a filter for example and now let's add some reverb
man, this is nice, man, this is nice. I always save them. Uh, in the bottle of green reverse linear, I think I used to know. Will this live stream be saved? I hope that it will be saved. Depends on YouTube uh, if everything is working. Nothing digital is truly random. This is true. Um, yes, okay. So now I'm playing this voice with my keyboard, but I, our um, destination today is to sequence this. So I'm going to get rid of the cables of the MIDI to CV module, module and I'm going to use the SEC3 from VCV, which is, in my opinion, one of the best sequencers because, because it's so, so useful for so many things. For so many things, for so many things, because, okay, so what is a sequencer? Basically, a sequencer will output voltage, will output a signal in a sequence, so one after the other. Now, there are sequences that can run in all sorts of directions, like a random also, so they will output the um, voltage randomly. Um, but in this case, this sequencer will run only in one direction, which is forward. And this sequencer has also a built-in clock. And the clock, maybe we'll speak about clock in a second. But before we start with all of these things, I want, just want to show you that we have three rows that we can use um, for all sorts of things. A sequencer doesn't have to sequence only pitch. This is something that a lot of people forget. A sequencer is, can be used for everything. You can sequence anything with um, with a sequencer and that's the whole fun of it but we will start of course with pitch so i'm going to send the first row to the volt per octave input of both of my oscillators and now nothing happens because again we need a gate for the envelope we need something to open the envelope to let the envelope flow to start it to start uh, that it, it will work so i'm going to send the gate output to my envelopes so we have two right so for now this is our sequence and now i can start changing the first row the controls for the first row and in this case it will control the frequency of the oscillators the pitch control the speed, the tempo of this sequence. And now there is an issue here that uh, it's at least it's an issue uh, to me. Hi, um, hi, Baikero, hi. And this is the tuning. I like to stay in scale. And for this, we can use something like a quantizer. I will use the one from VCV. Let's use the one from VCV. I'll just mute this for a second. Okay, so now the pitch from the, the voltage from the sequencer is what we call is not quantized to a scale at least, which means that um, you will have to go step by step and set the correct amount of voltage to go through to create specific notes. Now what a quantizer will do, a quantizer will basically correct, it will fix fix those um, values into steps that uh, in our ears we perceive them as, um, as a scale. So for example, I can set the C, let's go with C major this today. What do you think, C major, yeah? Stranger things, yeah. We go with C major. Now this quantizer is a bit weird because the C or the first step starts here on top. And I will tell you in a second also why I say first step and not C. But let's say that this note is C, that this step is C. So C is in the C major scale. I'm not gonna go now into uh, music theory, that's a bit too much, but let's uh, just create a C major scale. So I'm just going to quickly uh, show you this. C is in the C major scale. This is C sharp, it's not in the C major scale, so I can just turn it off. Then we have D, D sharp is not in the C major scale. Then we have E, then we have F, and then we have F sharp, it's not in the scale. We have G, we have G sharp, it's not in the scale. We have A, we have uh, A sharp or B flat, it's not in the scale, and then we have B. So now the voltage coming out of this first output of the row one will be quantized, it will be corrected into the 
made in this case, okay, I will call it the C major scale, C major scale. In a second, I will show you what it, why it has nothing to do with C major, but let's call it the C major scale. And now let's listen to this. You can already see that it's working. And now I can more freely move the... So now we have a sequence. So now we have a sequence. Now why why did I say that it has nothing to do with C major or not? The quantizer will not will not decide which notes are playing. Just because in this case, it doesn't say C, but if I show you a different quantizer, like the quantizer from JW, just because it says C here and says C minor doesn't mean that it will, you will get a C minor scale. If now I go and I tune my oscillators manually, and this is something you don't realize until you use hardware, I think, I don't know, at least this is something that came to me after I started using hardware. In VCV rec, all of the oscillators, most of them, 99% of them are tuned to the note C, which means that when you use a quantizer, and you set the notes C minor, for example, you will get also C minor because the oscillator is tuned to C. If still I leave it as C minor, but I tune my oscillators to G, it will not be C anymore. The quantizer will not decide which notes are playing. It will just fix the incoming voltage into steps that create a scale. And the same, the same with major and minor. Just because it says for example, now we have C major, that's because it says C major, doesn't mean it's C major. It can be also A minor, which is the relative um, scale, and it depends on the notes you are playing. So basically, the quantizer will not, what I'm trying to say here, don't rely on the quantizer to fix the pitch, just use it to fix the steps, to fix the intervals. And I'm sorry, I went a bit into... Um, music theory there a bit. Hi, hi, hi. Yeah, and there are ma many more tunings other than major and minor, of course. Um, but never mind. So now we have a sequence and it's going. But I want this to be nice and bassy. We wanted to create a bass, right? So there is another module from BCV that is called the uh, Octaver, I think. Yeah, the oct, um, which will let us the, um, change the octaves really quickly. So now we can have a nice bass. have a nice sequence now I don't uh, I, I, I enjoy more a seven step sequence than an eight step sequence and um, let's see a few questions here before I move on why some quantizer has the option to transpose to different notes for example D minor again the quantizer will not will not tell the module the oscillator which note to play so just because it gives you the option to change to D minor it's, it doesn't mean that it's D minor that's what I'm trying to say. Um, why it has it? Because it has it. Why not? That you can transpose a different uh, and, and play different intervals or... Could you put the quantizer after the VCO? Okay, this is a good point. Now, since arpeggios and chords are all fixed ca calculation, the quantizer remembers the distances between tones. Yeah, exactly the the intervals. Now about about the quantizer, about the placement of the quantizer. This is this is a really good point. I want to I want to mention. The quantizer will quantize will correct the incoming steps. Um, it will not change the pitch of the oscillator, which means that if you take an oscillator and you send it into a quantizer, it will not quantize the oscillator to a scale. It will do a different thing that maybe we'll explore later, which is quite interesting. And already I will say audio rate, um, audio rate experiments are always fun. 
but it will not it will not um, take the waveform and quantize it to a scale. It will take an incoming signal, um, preferably if you want to use a quantizer to, to uh, quantize to a scale, a stepped signal, um, a sequence, sample and hold we will speak about also later. So the placement of the quantizer is always before the, oh, not always, sorry, for, for delete this word, but it's most of the time before the oscillator and not after, because you want to quantize, you want to correct the sequence and not to quantize the oscillator. This will do a different thing. So this is also important where it is in the chain. Um, quantize will work, Martin, also on uh, audio. They will do a different thing, but a different thing. <laughs> exactly, yeah, like a bit crusher. Okay, cool. So now let's continue to this with this. So we have a sequence. So as I mentioned, I prefer a seven step sequence, so I'm just going to send to change it to seven steps. Now we have two more rows we can use. So for example, I can use one row to change the decay time of the, what's going on here the today? Ooh. The decay time of the, the decay time of the envelope. Yeah, I can show this also with an LFO, that's true. Right? Maybe later, maybe later we will uh, go into this. So I will use the second row to change the decay time, or in this case, actually the release time you can see the decay is not even engaged. Oh, okay. Let's see. Okay, now. Right, so I can control the decay time. I can sequence the decay time of the envelope and create a, a bit of a movement, a bit of variation there. to change pitch after VCO. No, you cannot, you cannot change the pitch with a quantizer after the VCO. What you will need is a pitch shifter that will pi shift the pitch. Now this will create artifacts and it's quite interesting to use, but it has nothing to do with the quantizer. It's called the pitch shifter. And now there is a bonus for you in the chat. And um, this, is, this is not really for beginners, but what is the difference? I mean, if we said that frequency is pitch, what is the difference between a frequency shifter and a pitch shifter? If pitch is frequency, then why there are two different modules? Why, what is the difference between a pitch shifter and a frequency shifter? I will not speak about it here because it has nothing to do with beginners. Hey, disco. With any kind of sequencers, is it possible to make bits feel more like human by slightly randomizing the timings? And this I will get into in a second with the clock. I will get to it with the clock. So now we have some variation for the decay. Let's listen to this for a second. And now I'm going to do something a bit more advanced. You know what? No, let's let's wait for the advanced. Now we I uh, see a question about accents. So accent, for example, can be for amplitude, but accent can also be for brightness. You can create accents by increasing the brightness of a sound. So what we will do? I will use the third row to control the um, filter even more. So one or two steps will have accents on them. But now we are using already an envelope to control the filter. So what we will need is a way to mix two signals. And I can use a mixer. I can use the mixer from VCV, but I can also use what's called a unity mixer. And let's see if I can, f yes, a unity mixer. A unity mixer will mix um, signals, but at unity gain, at 100%, you don't have the option to decrease the amplitude of a signal. So now I'm going to mix the envelope with the third row of the sequencer. 
And now I can add sorts of accents. Let's say step four will have an accent. Right? I don't see answers about the pitch shifter and frequency shifter. That's a good question. And I'm waiting for the answer. Okay, so now we have sorts of accents. Maybe we can add even another one on the... on the seventh. So we have a bit of movement. Okay, now here is something I really love doing and it's also really nice for beginners just to expand, uh, add another layer. What I like to do when I have a bassy sound is I like to send this sound after the Lopez filter. I like to send it, Hans answered it, where is it, where is it, where is it? Change the signal or stretch the signal? Change the signal or stretch this? I'm not so sure I understand, but I don't think that, that that's not the answer I'm looking for, no. That's not the answer I'm looking for. Again, what's the difference between a pitch shifter and a frequency shifter? Aha. If pitch is frequency, what is the difference? Okay, so now, okay, so again, I, I like sending bass sounds to a high pass filter after the low pass filter and then to a delay, which means that when I open the filter, the low pass filter, more high frequencies go out or pass through which means that only those high frequencies will go to the delay and this is quite a nice effect. The frequency shifts, shifts specific frequency and the pitch shifter shifts all frequencies. Um, you are getting closer. Pitch shifting keeps the harmonic relation between the pitches. Frequency. Yes, Sebastian! Very well. Very nice. 10 points. You get 10 points. Sebastian Visser. A pitch, so a pitch shifter a pitch shifter will keep the harmonic relationship between the harmonics, basically. And a frequency, so for example, for example, uh, it's not so much for beginners, but never mind, I will explain this anyway. For example, if, if we have, a, 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 let's say, a, a wave with the harmonics, okay? The uh, fundamental is at 100 hertz, let's say. The next harmonic will be double the frequency will be 200 hertz. The next harmonic will be double the frequency will be 400 hertz. The next one will be double the frequency will be the next overtone. Uh, no, not double the frequency, it's octave. We, we have 100 hertz. The next overtone will be uh, 200 hertz. The next overtone will be another 100 hertz, will be 300 hertz and 400 hertz and so on and so on and so on. This will be with pitch, right? A pitch shifter, if I shift the pitch by 50, let's say 50 hertz, it means that the fundamental goes to 150 hertz, but it keeps the relation. So the next overtone will be 300 hertz and the next overtone or octave or whatever. So it keeps the harmonic relationship. If I add 50 hertz with the frequency shifter, it will have the fundamental 150, the next one will be 250, and then the next one will be 350 and it will lose the relationship between the overtones and it will not stay harmonic. So that's the answer. A pitch shifter will keep the harmonic relationship and the frequency shifter will not. And this is why frequency shifters sound so weird. Where were we? Okay, another filter again, as I mentioned, the high pass filter. So I'm going to send this voice to a high pass filter in this case. Let's just get rid of the things here. And I'm going to set the frequency to, let's say, about 500 hertz. So now everything above 500 hertz will go to a delay. And let's send this delay to the mixer. And 
change the delay time and mix all the way up. Hopalach, hopalach means like, oops. Right, so now, for this here and maybe a little bit less less volume okay so we have this voice yes again a pitch shifter will keep the harmonic relationship and a frequency shifter will not okay Let's see here for a second, very nice. Okay, so this is the first voice that we have. Just added another layer to it. And now, what now? Now let's create a pad. All right, let's create a pad and we create, we create a polyphonic signal. So now I will go a bit quicker because we went through the basics already. I will use again my lovely key step. Okay, and now let's use Let's use um, let's use again two oscillators. But you know what? I'm going to use now the VCO2. Now the VCO2. Oh, and this will give me a chance also to explain a bit of FM. A VCO2. What's up? The VCO2 has no uh, uh, different wave outputs, as you can see. It has one output, and we can scan through the waveforms, and this can add lots and lots of movement to a pad. And now I'm going to ask you this. The VCO2 has no volt per octave input. How come? How come? Yeah, the, you know, Stormelder, I didn't, there is one pitch shifter in VCV Rec and from, from uh, Nisci and it's not, it's not the best. I wish there was a better pitch shifter in VCV because then Shimmer would be amazing. Um, again, no volt per octave on this oscillator. What shall we do? This is an open question to the chat. Okay, so for now, let's have two of the VCO2s. And already I will use the same LFO I have here. I have here an LFO. I'm going to use a sine wave. Um, okay, I'm going to use a sine wave to one wave input and a triangle wave to the second wave input. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a module that's called 8Vert. And 8Vert gives me basically 8... Eight at ten new verters, the FM input, very nice. Eight at ten new verters, so I can invert the signal. So again, let's see this. This will be the original signal, the original LFO. And this will be the inverted LFO. So I can have the same signal, but invert it once and get one wave control to move to the right and one wave control to move to the left. But I'm going to use two different waveforms. So I'm going to do something like this. This will be one modulation, and this will be the second modulation. And I'm going to attenuate it also just a bit. Okay, so now again, we have this here, and we need also a mixer so I can mix the oscillators. Right? Just like we've, di we've, did, we've, did? we've done before. We've did. <laughs> Hi, David. Hi, hi. Yes, Matt, exactly. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so now we are mixing those waveforms. And now let's have a listen to this. And again, I will detune them a bit. I will solo it. Okay, so now we are creating a pad sound. Right, so we have this and now I'm going to detune them slightly again 
again just to add some movement to everything okay now as you could see here and I asked this before we have no volt per octave input there is no volt per octave input on this oscillator and as I mentioned already a few times pitch is frequency so when we change the frequency we change also the pitch also the pitch now FM means frequency modulation frequency is pitch so it's also pitch modulation and I'm going to give you a tip I don't think I will go into FM too deeply in this stream maybe I will make a dedicated stream just for FM because it's a long subject and a deep one um, but again frequency is pitch frequency modulation means also pitch modulation uh, and the tip here is that this FM on the VCO2 and the VCO1 works exactly the same like the volt per octave input just like with dedicated attenuation just like with dedicated attenuation which means that if I send pitch information volt per octave information to the FM input and I open the attenuator all the way to 100% it will work exactly the same like volt per octave so I can use the volt per octave from the key step can use the volt per octave from the key step to change the pitch now what we will do we will make this polyphonic so we can play a few different notes a few different notes um, at the same time what is a pad wow that's a good question a pad I think it's a sort of like a background carpet of sound um, chords usually not necessarily um, just to give a bit more texture a bit more background to everything I think this is a pad someone else has a better uh, description of a pad I would love also to learn mostly chords yeah so for to make this polyphonic we have to go to the right click menu of the MIDI to CV module polyphonic channels I'm going to choose five so we can play up to five notes at the same time you can see already that the um, cables changed here they are now thicker and the light is blue now we have to be careful with levels here because now we have not two oscillators but each oscillator plays five voices which means that we have 10 oscillators all in all so it can be quite loud you hear the chord and what I like I like to set the polyphonic mode to reset so every time I hit a key it will start from the beginning and we have pads, uh, chords right and now what we can do is send this again send this again to a filter again we will create a subtractive voice sort of and we send it to a Lopez filter and when you use polyphony in VCV rack you should be aware you should be aware of the fact that if you're using polyphony all of the modules you're using in the chain should also be polyphonic there, uh, I don't think there are polyphonic VCOs in, uh, in hardware so all of the modules we use in the chain should be polyphonic otherwise you will not get the result you might want and of course you can experiment with it sometimes happy accidents do happen happen Okay, so let's have a listen to this now. Let's me just. This was oh C major, sorry. sound that much but 
Now, if I add, for example, another LFO to the frequency, let's say, Stromelder, I think the Doppler is not polyphonic. I mean, it has, it has um, four oscillators, but you cannot do this with one cable. I think that, that was the question, right? If there, are, if there are polyphonic modules that are working with one cable, a polyphonic cable, I think that was the question. If not, then yeah, you can get polyphony in your record. So let's add a nice uh, amount of reverb. We are still not done with this voice, but... So now I want to demonstrate for a second what I spoke before about just because we it's C major doesn't mean that it's C major, it can be also A minor for example. So now I'm playing A minor. And we will make this Okay, now here is a question, a question, a question. I want that each time I'm playing a note... Okay, before we get into this, first of all, let's add an envelope for the amplitude. I don't want this to drone, I want to play the notes myself. So I'm going to use the gate from the key step. And again, also this module is polyphonic, and this is important. And this we will take to, let's say, after the filter, we can add another VCA, just like we did before. I'm sorry, I'm going a bit quicker now, but we did this already. Right, and now I can play. Cheers, Roman Poyo. Right? So I can play a chord and when I let go, the chord goes down. Now, when every time I, I hit a new note, I want the LFO to do something like this. the frequency of the LFO will go up quickly and slowly down. What module can I use to do this? What module can I use to take the LFO with each note that I'm playing, the LFO frequency up directly and then slowly down? Let's see. Yeah, the VCA is really cool. Again, I want to get this effect. I will take the levels a bit, or maybe the... Um, Dennis, I'm not speaking about a specific module, I'm speaking about uh, an idea of a module, and I see already Laurent and Davy and uh, Void say ADSR. So yes, an envelope, we can use an envelope for this, and here is an example that you can use an envelope for other things and an uh, amplitude. Again, um, voltage is voltage is voltage. So try and use um, envelopes for all sorts of things. So I'm going to take another envelope, and again I want this to happen directly when I hit a note, which means that the attack time when it goes to maximum will be the shortest. I don't want sustain, I don't need this to sustain, I want it to go directly 
directly down so we will, we will uh, deal with decay I guess so let's send the gate again this is polyphonic let's take it here and let's listen to the result I'm going to send this to the FM input because I'm changing the frequency of the LFO and FM stands for frequency modulation So this is the effect. This is more or less the effect I wanted. I wanted the LFO to start quickly and then slowly fade down to a slower frequency. To a slower frequency which is quite, quite cool. And of course also for this you can use an ADSR. Okay, very cool. What I want here for the free, for the uh, I'm using a field. the change not reflected visually on the LFO1 yet? Is it in the background? What do you mean visually on the LFO1? I'm not so sure I understand. Now we are still not done with this pad. We are still not done with this pad. I'm going to add another oscillator and I'm going to add the oscillator 1 just to make it easier. The VCO1 because I want FM and volt per octave and I don't feel like using a mixer now to mix the different things. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use again the oct the octave modules just so I can take the octaves up and down because I want this oscillator to be an octave up. Alright, so I'm going to connect it and I'm going to use... Um, I'm going to use a square wave with modulation on the pulse width. So let's use the... let's use the LFO, the triangle. So again we will get this movement. And let's uh, not... Don't, we'll not detune this in the... down, take it an octave up and let's listen to it. Let's see, let's start adding it. What I'm going to do, there is movement. I will take this even lower. There is movement for the filter. Let me just see if there are no. I do not see the knob rotating. You know, the knob will not rotate in VCV in this case uh, when you make when you modulate it. Um, I just want to see if there is a question here. Um, there are some modules here, yeah, like Lindenberg, exactly. Yeah. 
Okay, so now we have this. But I want to add also movement for this VCO1, movement of the frequency, so we can create sort of um, vibrato. Sort of vibrato. And what we will use for this, I will use another LFO and I will use the LFO2. And I know I'm, I'm adding lots of modules, but um, most of them are, are, are more or less basic and I hope that this helps um, especially beginners um, to understand some things. Even though I'm adding lots of modules, I hope still it's not too confusing. So I'm going to use this LFO2 just because it's smaller and I'm going to modulate the frequency of this oscillator. I want the frequency, I want the pitch to move slightly to create a sort of a vibrato and I will solo this voice and so maybe you can hear it better. Let's see. If I add too much, I want just a bit and quicker. Lots of movement, oh man. Okay, let's see again how patch an ADSR module for inverse its characteristic. I'm not so sure I understand. I'm not so sure I understand what you mean. Um, Aziz, Psytrance. Um, I don't understand. Ask it again, maybe. Portamento. We will go over Portamento as well. Oh, look, there is Martin Luders and there is Martin L. Hi, hi, both. <laughs> Almost two hours already? No. No way. Oh, there's so much I wanted to do. How long? Where can I say how long is it? Wow, man. I'm so sorry. It's so long. Okay, let's play a bit with the chords. It's a bit too loud, I guess. And the filter also. Okay, let's do something like this. I have an LFO on the filter. I want to add also an envelope so the filter will open and close. Again, I will use the Unity Mixer, which I have here another channel. And it's also polyphonic, I hope. Let's see. Yeah, it's also polyphonic. No, it's not polyphonic. So I'm going to use a Mixer Mixer. Okay, let's use a Mixer Mixer. I just want to mix the LFO with the... Um, with another envelope that I'm going to use to open the filter. So this envelope will not have, it will not have a sustain stage because I want it, even though I'm holding the notes, I want the filter to close. By the way, I just noticed that I do something without saying what it is. For example, if you have a cable, Let's say I have the cable from the gate output from the MIDI module and I want to take another copy of it. I don't have to go to the MIDI module and take it from there. I can take it from the destination. If I hold control on Windows at least, I can grab another cable and you can see I just have another one. And I just noticed that I'm doing it without explaining. So I just took another gate. Another um, gate to there. And now we can fine tune. We can fine tune this. Thank you. 
so I'm sorry, I, uh, I missed the chat. Portamento, yes, we will do this later. Okay, listen to this, listen to this uh, chord. What do, we, what do we have here? We have modulation for the filter with an LFO that is changing. We get a ba 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 We get modulation for the filter with an envelope. So the filter is open. Sl- no, sorry. The filter is open slowly and closed slowly, even though the notes are still playing. So after a while, we get darker notes. We have modulation for the pitch for one oscillator. And we have modulation for the... waves of the oscillator. We have so much movement in this chord. Listen to this. This is nice. This is nice. So we have also chords. Now the question is, is how to sequence this. I don't want to play this with a key step. I want to sequence it. And we will stick with the um, sec 3. We will stay with the sec 3. So what we will do is this. What we will do is this. Um, I'm going to use another sec 3. And now you can see that we have an ex- uh, the sec 3 has a c- built-in clock and we also have an external clock input which means that we can sync we can sync um, we can sync two different um, sequencers. So what I'm going to do I'm not going to use okay I can use the gate output to sync this sequencer and you can see that if I do it, they will run at the same rate. I don't want them to run the same rate. I want this sequencer to run much slower or much slowly, slow, slowly <laughs> than the first, than the first sequence. So what I'm going to do, you can see that the sec3 has individual gate outputs, which means that I can use one gate to use it as a clock. And yes, you can use gates as clocks. Again, voltage is voltage is voltage. So I'm going to use the first output to the external clock input, which means that with each cycle of the first sequencer, the second sequencer will move one step. Now, this is not enough. We need polyphony in VCV rec, and this is not working in hardware the same. Return of the quantum trick. Maybe, maybe next time. And this is more for beginners. I don't want to confuse confuse people here. Um, so again, uh, this will not work in hardware. In VCV rec, we can use polyphony and we can merge, we can combine different signals into one polyphonic channel. And for this, we have the merge the merge VCV merge module so I can combine different signals and I'm going to combine the, f- the three rows of the sequencer you can see here we have three lights on which means that now we have a three note polyphony so what I'm going to do I'm going to send this to another quantizer just going to duplicate this quantizer again I want to stay in the same scale or in the, with the same intervals And this is going to be our volt per octave. And the gate will come from the gate output. And we are going to get a bit quicker clocks, which is not really what I want. So let me think what I can do. I can use another, um, let me think for a second how I can make it easier. I can use a clock divider, but I want to use mostly the VCV modules. So let me just see. By the way, this is my most used 
modules and you can see the first one is the scope. Okay, let me see. Okay, I can use a switch. I hope it's not too, it's not too complicated. Um, I can use a switch. I can use a switch to divide this clock. Let's see if there is something simpler that I can do. Um, no. Okay, so I'm going to use a switch. A this is a sequential switch. A sequential switch would switch between signals sequentially, much like a sequencer. It's basically a sequencer that you can decide the signals coming in and coming out. In this case, we have a switch that has one input, but has four outputs, which means that I can send one input, one uh, source, and switch between different destinations. I hope it's not too complicated. Um, yeah, there is no clock divider in VCV, in the VCV collection. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to send this gate that we are using, this clock, to the clock input of the switch. Which means that now, as you can see, it will come out... It will not come out, it will switch between the outputs. And if I send it also to the input, so it's also triggering the switch and it's also the signal for the switch, you can see that when it comes to... You saw it? To step one, it will output a trigger. So basically, it means that we are dividing this clock by four. So every four times it will play. So I have here a clock divider. So I'm going to use this as the external clock. So now, we have a clock divider. And now I can show you a different a different issue that we have here and I have to think how to fix it first before I can explain it but let me let me show you this for a second I'm going to mute everything and this is something also I see a lot of questions about a lot of questions about and I'm going to do it here ADSR and I need a gate I'm just going to use this module here that I can generate a gate and a scope hey Rasmus Yeah, Stormelder, uh, sequential switch. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so now the VC, the SS2 is a clock divider? I use the SS1. Never mind, it works the same. But now I have a different issue, and that's the length of the gate. So again, a gate is nothing but a pulse, right? And as long as I hold this button, in this case, the gate will stay high. When it's high, it means that it's at maximum. When it's low, it, mix, it means that it's at zero. Now, let's say that I have here an envelope, and the envelope has an attack all the way down. And this will be the pink trace. And I'm going to use the same gate. Have a look what happens as long as the gate is high. You saw the envelope? The attack stage had enough time, the gate was open long enough for it to finish its stage. The attack could go all the way up. But what if we have a longer attack? We need also a longer gate. You saw it, it took this, this amount of time for the gate to be open that the attack, maybe I can zoom in a bit, that the attack would finish its uh, stage. I will do it again. From this point to this point. If I have the attack even longer, I need even a longer gate. Look at this. Just now. From here until here, the gate has to be open for the attack to finish its stage. If the gate would not be open long enough, the attack stage, as you can see here, will not finish, will not get to maximum. And this is now a problem that we are facing because the gate we are using from the sequencer, and I can show you this here, the gate we are using from the sequencer is not long at all for the long attack that we have because we have a longer attack for the pad that we are using. I hope it's not too confusing. Let me know. I can explain it again. So if I solo the pad, you will hear that we get nothing basically. 
there is no sound because the attack because the attack for the amplitude is quite long if I take the attack down oh now it's triggering it twice that's funny haha <laughs> funny we get two triggers but we can use it two triggers why not right so now I need the attack to be all the way open which is quite disappointing there is a way out of it and you know what maybe I will show you it to you it's not it has nothing to do with the VCV modules it has to do with the BOG audio module set. Anyway, if you are a beginner, I recommend installing also the BOG audio collection. And this module is called D-Gate. And D-Gate, basically, we can change the length of an incoming trigger or gate. So for example, now we get this length. I can change it to be shorter. I can change it to be longer. Right? So we get a longer gate. So maybe I will use this module just to fix this issue that we had. This is not what I wanted. I wanted this one. Right, so now we have the pad open and we need to use the gates for everything now okay so this was the first uh, module it's not from the VCV we use now um, Staros is there some ADSR that you rely on a trigger instead of a gate envelope generator no function generator yes um, shall I go into the, dif the, the difference between an envelope generator and a function generator dgate is not in the VCV no FM operator yeah Okay, I think this stream today will be a bit longer than usual. I'm sorry for that again. I hope it's not too boring for you. Okay, so now we have this pad and now we can start again. We are merging, we are merging the three rows into a polyphonic signal, which means that now I can start changing. I can start changing the notes here and we will get chords basically. So let's see what happens. so much more that I wanted to show you but it's just too long I guess okay I will create another voice any recommendations on Arya's harsh criticism on the VCV creator and why she stopped making VCV modules Wow, this is deep. This is deep. Um, Hans, envelope function generator still makes my head hurt. Uh, Numa, I don't, I don't really know what to say. I can say something like this, and it has nothing to do with Aria or the VCV creator. I can say something like this, and again, it has nothing to do with the story. What I want to say is that the internet is a bad place. 
that's it. That's all what I have to say. That the internet sometimes, I would say most of the times, is a bad place. It has nothing to do with Aria or with the VCV creator. That's all what I have to say for now. Um, I have no difference with envelope generator. <laughs> 24 hours. I don't think I will go uh, 24 hours. Okay, so let's have a look. <clears throat> While this is running in the background, I will have an ADSR, not this one, so the VCV one, and I will have... Okay, so what we have here, we have two different modules. This is now the differences between, or some of the difference, or a difference. Um, between an envelope generator and a function generator. Now, an envelope is also a function. So all envelopes are functions. All envelope generators will generate functions. So basically, it's more or less the same. But, again, as I, as I uh, told you before, just a second ago, no, I didn't tell you, as I showed before, an envelope generator relies on the uh, length of a gate. So the envelope, the stages of the envelope will be limited to the length of the gate. So again, if we take the example with the attack, if the gate is not long enough, the attack stage will not finish its stage. So if we have a long attack, I will show you also the gate. The gate is the pink trace, the uh, envelope is the blue trace. You can see that it will not go to maximum if the gate is not long enough. It needs a longer gate to go to maximum. <laughs> so, yeah. So, an envelope generator will rely on the incoming gate. A function generator, most of them at least, in most cases, will not rely on the incoming gate. Actually, they will only, they only have to have, has, have to be triggered and they will start their cycle. Now, usually a function generator will have less stages. So you will have, in this case, for example, I have a function generator that has only an attack and a decay, two stages. There, there are also function generators that can have also a sustain stage. Um, so what I want to say here is that if we have a look at the function generator, it doesn't matter how long the gate is because it just looks for a trigger. So if I have a longer attack, I just look here on the scope at the, at the pink trace, see that the gate is really short, but the envelope still finishes, finishes its cycle. You see, the, there is no gate anymore and still we get the full Still, we get the full envelope. I always hit the same. Mm, come on. Come on. Okay, now. You see? Short gate. The envelope still finishes its cycle. Finishes its cycle. So this is the main difference between an envelope generator that relies on a gate and a function generator that doesn't. The main this other uh, difference is that usually an envelope generator will have more stages, like attack, decay, sustain, and release. A function generator will have usually attack, decay, sometimes attack, sustain, decay. Sometimes there will be also a hold function. That's the main difference. So now we have this. Now I'm going to add one more voice because this stream is already long. And we will look at portamento, we will look at glide. And for this I'm just, I'm not going to sequence, I'm just going to use the keyboard. Did I remove the MIDI module? Yeah. By the way, I hope that I'm just, I just uh, saved the patch. I hope that uh, I will, uh, everything will go well. And I will put a link in the description to this patch. So you can download it and take a closer look. If you want to recreate it later, it will be great. Okay, so let's see the VCV modules, what we have. Let's see, let's see for a second. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's see what else we 
sample and hold, we didn't speak about sample and hold. Aye, 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 maybe now we'll speak about sample and hold. So many things, man. Um, I'm just looking... By the way, all of the modules I'm using today are free, yeah? Are available for free, so you can just download this uh, patch. Okay, you know what? So we will stick with uh, subtractive synthesis in this case. Oh, you know what? We can do additive synthesis also. But it's a bit... I will need uh, a, lo a lot more of uh, oscillators. Let's stick with uh, subtractive synthesis for this stream. So now I want to create a sort of a voice that I can play. When would we want one or the other? Uh, Luis, you mean envelope and function? Well, again... Uh, envelope generator will work with the gate, a function generator will work with the trigger. If you have triggers, use a function generator. I love using function generators because then I don't have to think so much about I have gates, I don't have gates, because usually I use sequencers and not a keyboard. Um, if you want a sustain stage, sometimes you will want to use a, an envelope generator, although there are also function generators like Rampage that you can have also a sustain stage. Um, yeah. FM bass. Like Omni uses filter by in the module browser? Ah. Yeah, of course, filter by VCD. Yeah, why not? Okay, so let's add an oscillator. This is going to be monophonic. Already I'm going to send the pitch to it, and I already know that I want... You know we can do some FM, I don't know, it's exponential, it's a bit weird. Let's, let's, I will save a whole live stream for FM for a different time, right? We will speak about FM. Okay, so now I'm going to use, for now, just one uh, oscillator. I'm going to show you a bit of vibrato, maybe tremolo also. Maybe also tremolo. We will see. I want to control the amplitude of this voice, so again I'm going to use a VCA. Let's try a triangle. Try a triangle. Try a triangle um, wave. At, again, I'm going to use an ADSR to control the amplitude of this, vo of this voice. And you will need the gate as well. And let's listen to how this sounds like before we start changing things. I hope the music in the background doesn't uh, is not too much. You can still hear me and everything. Let's see. Okay, now I don't want such a long attack, but I want some attack, so it's not too punchy. a bit more sustain level again sustain is level and not time just a bit more so when it sustains it's a bit louder and a bit more decay so it takes a bit longer to the sound to go to this level of the sustain another oscillator and this one is going to be a square wave and I'm going again I want to mix those voices those oscillators before they go to the VCA and I know the mixer is also a VCA but I'm going to use another filter again we are dealing with subtractive this time in this stream because I think it's the easiest for beginners you want a Bukla style sound for this new voice? 
I'm not so sure I understand. Should I make a bookla sound? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm concentrating for beginners. I don't want to go too much. Yeah. And we need again the pitch for the second oscillator. And I want to take it an octave down. We already did all of this. I can use the octave module right with... It's not new. the re-trigger this is a good question okay so I will I will go for a second to the re-trigger but getting into hardware module like where to buy modules how to choose the power I'm not so sure it will be a live stream but yes I'm planning on a video about this how to go from this CV rack into hardware yeah I'm not so sure it's uh, it's uh, it will work with the live stream but maybe we'll see Okay, so I'm going to pause this for a second and let's talk a bit about the read trigger of the ADSR module. So the read trigger, and again, I'm going to use... What am I going to use? The manual? No, I need, I need a key step for this. So I'm going to steal the key step for a second from here. And I need another scope. Okay, so now the read trigger. Let's say that I have a short attack. And let's say that it's sustaining somewhere here, right? And I'm using a gate. And I have my envelope, right? I have a tech. The decay is quite short. The sustain is here. I will zoom in a bit so we can all see this. Now the re-trigger, what it will do, the re-trigger, what it will do, it will re-trigger the envelope only when it's in its sustained stage. So as long as the envelope is sustaining, you can create another pick, another attack and decay, as long as it's in its sustained stage. So if I have polyphony, I think it will work with polyphony. Let's see if it will not work with polyphony also. Yeah, I need polyphony. I need a different, let's say... Let's see, oh, Allah, let's see if it will work like this. No. Okay, I need, I need something like this. So again, it will work only when it's in the sustain stage. So I have another gate here. I have the gate, oh, Allah, the gate of the MIDI, of the key step. I point like this because it's here. Triggering the ADSR, and I have another gate there to trigger the re-trigger and now I'm still in the sustain stage and look what happens when I re-trigger the envelope. You see this? It re-triggers as long as it's in its sustain stage. So again, when I take it down and I hit re-trigger, nothing will happen. But as long as the envelope is in its sustain stage, the, it will re-trigger with a trigger in the re-trigger input. And this you can use two sequences for this, you can use two different Right? You see it re-triggers and you can use different all sorts of things while you hold keys it re-triggers you can use it for all sorts of effects so I hope this was clear in all, you thought it works in all stages I'm not so sure I understand about it cheers Dennis Ah, yeah, I have here a re-trigger output. Yeah, true. You see, there is a dedicated re-trigger. So now, you see, I can re-trigger the envelope as long as it's in its sustain stage. Oh, actually, it will work also with other... With the re-trigger from the MIDI, it will work also with the other stages. <laughs> That's cool, but not with the other one. But... Basically, it will re-trigger the envelope. Okay, so now let's go back to our voice. I need two volt per octaves and I need one gate. Okay, let's see. Yeah, Martin, thank you. Yeah, exactly, as long as the gate is high 
will re-trigger the annual loop. And that's why, because I used the, the same gate, basically, it was always high, so it used... So it re-triggered in all of the stages. Okay, so now this is the basic sound that we have here. Of course, we will use... We will add... A few more things. First of all, let's speak about portamento, about glide. What is portamento? Basically, it means that when moving from one pitch to another, it will not move in steps, but it will be a smooth transition. And this, and this you can do with a slew limiter. It's called a slew limiter that will limit the voltage per second. And a slew limiter we have also from Borg Audio. I used already one module from Borg Audio. I will use another one. I don't think there is one from BCV. And again, I'm going to use this gate module. <clears throat> and what we have is this. Now we have the original gate. The original gate on the scope, right? We have just a pulse wave. Just a pulse wave. Now I can set independently the time it will take this gate to rise, uh, something similar to a tech, and the time it will take to fall. Which means that now if you have a look, it's not a pulse wave anymore, it's not a square. You see? There is slew, there is lag. The voltage is being limited to a certain a certain amount and this we can control I can have a longer rise and a shorter fall you see and this will work also with pitch now if we are exactly exactly I just I was just going to this if we are if you do want to use only the VCV modules we can use the filter we can use a Lopez filter as a slew limiter. So if I open it all the way, we get the pulse. But if I start closing it, you will see that we will get a more smoother signal. You can see, you, you see here that it's a bit rounder around the edges. That's because it will filter out higher frequencies, which will make the which will make the waveform smoother. Just like when you filter a square wave, it will become eventually a sine wave. It will do the same. But I like to use a slew limiter for pitch because it we have more control over the when the pitch goes up and when the pitch goes down, fall, uh, rise and fall. So I'm going to use. A slew limiter. But just so you know, in hardware, for example, you need a slew limiter, you have a filter, you can use a filter. As long as it's DC coupled. I'm not going to go into this now. <laughs> okay, so now let's use a slew limiter. And I'm going to take this down for a second. I really hope that this stream is helpful. going to start adding slew. And this is portamento, you hear the glide between the notes, it's not step stepwise, it's gliding. This is portamento, basically. Can you go beyond the knob range? I'm not so sure I understand. High res is fun. Yeah, it creates this um, sort of like um, like a, like a vibrato effect, right? A resonant filter. Cheers, Luis. Okay, and already I need a f uh, river, maybe some delay later on. Right? 
right? So we have glide. Now, another thing that is fun to add is first of all, we'll add also a filter because I will want to control a bit the high frequencies. So we'll take it from the mixer to a filter. I will play also with the filter, but what I want... Braveheart, totally, right? Yeah, Portamento is Glide, basically. Yeah, it's the same. And now what we want, I want also to create Vibrato. And Vibrato means... Um, like we did before with the pad, um, movement of the pitch like a violinist do, like, I mean, in pian with the piano you cannot do this really, like a violinist, like a guitar player. And we will add it also later with the mod wheel, but first of all, let's use an LFO. And again, this LFO is going to control the frequency of the oscillators. It's going to modulate their frequency. question a question for you I don't want the I want to control the amount of FM I want to control the amount of vibrato with the mod wheel never mind with what now let's say the mod wheel how can I achieve something like this how can I have control how can I have control over the amount over the amplitude of the vibrato Martin, don't help them. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> wow, this was a new button. <clears throat> so this was a question. I just have, I just have to write something quickly. sequencer another ADSR but how okay an ADSR is it's possible but how uh, Mikael another VCA this is nice hey Jonas thank you another VCA another VCA very cool very nice very nice so I'm going to use a VCA And I'm going to control the VCA with the module of the key step. You can see here that it's moving. So if I solo it, now we have no vibrato. And I can add vibrato. Let's change the vibrato a bit. VCAs are amazing. Um, okay.
right so we have more movement here maybe i can fine tune them a bit so we have more movement for this voice more movement and okay i could also directly connect mod wheel to fm Yes, but this will shift the pitch. This will control the... the so it will not add vibrato. Um, Staros, so, uh, it will not add vibrato. Um, if you send the module directly to the FM. exponential switch on the VCA so it changes the response of the VCA from linear which is basically a line between two dots or exponential which means that the more the amplitude raises the quicker it raises also which is great for percussive sounds depends yeah exactly what you want to do okay so now Now let's add, okay, now I want to ask you, how can I add also tremolo? Uh, for those of you who know what tremolo is, I want to add tremolo. To add tremolo to this sort of lead sound. How can I do this? Tremolo is basically like vibrato, but for amplitude and not for pitch. Hey, Freddy. We will do this, I will add some delay and then a short performance and it will be for today so tremolo how can i add tremolo Tremolo, tremolo, how can I add tremolo? VCN LFO, very nice, very nice, exactly, exactly. So I'm going to send this voice to another VCA. <clears throat> and I'm going to have also an LFO for this VCA. And now there is something to keep in mind here. The VCA will work with unipolar signals. Again, we looked before at unipolar and bipolar, which means that it will work from 0 to 10. So if you are using an LFO with, that is bipolar, you will get just half the levels. You need to make sure it's uh, unipolar, and I can show you this also. So this is unipolar, you see the whole range. Bipolar will be just until 0, and we will get also silence. Now let's try to make, to sync this LFO with our sequence. So we have the reset input, man, I'm going deep here. We have the reset input for this LFO, which means that whenever it receives a trigger in the reset input, it will reset itself, which means that if we can get the frequency right with the gate outputs from the sequencer, which is more or less like this. Oh, this is nice. But I want a quicker frequency, so I'm going to take this a bit up until we get the next. Tremolo is about amplitude, yeah. Hans, offset the LFO. Okay, so what 
again we can do is offset this LFO we have here uh, but we then we need another module another one and another module that is not from BCV um, you know let's leave it like this let's leave it like this what happens when we Okay, now some delay, maybe stereo delay, so I will use two delays from BCV. Um, we will use it in stereo and set different delay times, of course. Uh, maybe different color also, a bit less mix. Different delay times, more feedback. Tremolo is not amazing, but LFO is life. Yeah, you, I can make this, but it's a bit too complicated now. I want to keep it simple as much as I can. What CPU are you using? Wow, I don't remember. It's in the description, but if you look at the description, there are the specs of the computer I'm using. Vista. Can you su su suggest me a good random LFO? What do you mean with the random LFO? Hardware, I guess. There's not so many modules. Uh, maybe it is. Wow, this is a big patch all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, now let's do something like this. Let's have fun just for this LFO for the for the tremolo. What I'm going to do, I'm going to mix the LFOs that we have here and we will have a look at the result. So let's mix. We have here an LFO. Let's take the triangle wave. We have here an LFO. Let's take the sine wave. We have here an LFO. Let's take the saw wave and attenuate them a bit. Right, and let's use this signal to modulate the frequency of this LFO. Just a bit. Just a tiny bit. It's a bit too quick here, everything. Again, I did this here. You know? yeah. How much this patch will cost in hardware, with or without polyphony? <laughs> Okay, so now what I'm going to do, now that we have this set, I'm going to use uh, the MIDI map module. I have here a controller, the Korg um, Nano Control 2, that if you want some hands-on control with VCV, I really recommend. It's, um, <laughs> it's uh, quite affordable, it's small, and it has um, buttons, knobs, and faders. So I'm just going to use it just so I can perform this patch. So I'm going to set a few different controls here. So let's say, for example, the cutoff of the filter for the bass. 
so I can do something like this. Right? And here we have the pads. What can I do with the pads? Let's see. Also the cutoff for the pads. And maybe also the cutoff for this... Um, And we need more volume here and a bit more reverb. What is this? No, now I'm on the uh, desktop. I'm not on the laptop, I'm on the desktop. The color of the delay is basically a sort of a filter that you can filter the delayed signal. EQ, yeah, filter EQ, yeah. Yeah, I cannot, I can, okay, let's do this. Let's offset. What I'm going to do, I'm going to offset. I'm going to use the offset module from Bog Audio. Again, Bog Audio, we used already a few modules, which means that which means that uh, the VCA will not start from 0 to 10, but it will start, let's say, from 5 to 10. So it's not all the way... Um, if I can show you this... So it's not all the way at 0. just need to map the levels of this here and Apalach, no, this I didn't want to do. Ah, come on, come on. Yes, this is one and this is two. Okay. Ah, no, this is not what I wanted. This is what I wanted. Okay. Okay. So this was the patch. I'm going to perform it now a bit, um, just to have some fun. Um, I hope it was not too confusing. We started slowly, and then all of a sudden we had a patch going. I, I planned to go through, I'm speaking there because that's the chat. I planned uh, to uh, go through many, many more aspects, like sample and hold, like voltage ranges and all of this, but I per apparently three hours are not enough or two and a half hours are not enough. Um, yeah, so this is how it goes. Um, yes, so I'm going to perform this patch. Uh, stick around, I will come back. See you on the other side.
That was that was nice. Um, thank you, Chris. Thank you for being a fun guy. <laughs> Now you have a, a mushroom. By the way, this is something new. Uh, I tried to make it for free, but uh, YouTube, uh, the limit of YouTube is 99 cent. Um, but now you have a mushroom next to your name, which is quite, quite cool. And I saw another donation. Thank ah, Chris, another one from Chris. Thank you so much, man, also for the donation. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, that was it for today. Again, I, uh, I hope it was not too boring for the more experienced uh, ones. And I hope it was not too confusing for the beginners. This was mostly for beginners. It was a beginner-friendly um, live stream. I hope it was fun and I hope it uh, was helpful. I hope to make more of those also. Um, thank you so much everyone for joining I will drink another schluck another sip oh. <laughs> how can I make donation thank you very much first of all and I think down in the chat and um, there is somewhere um, that you can make a donation there is somewhere there that uh, And I really, really appreciate it. Um, I know it was a long one today, almost three hours, two and a half hours, but it was fun. Hey, another fun guy, Brian. <laughs> you also have a mushroom now. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you, um, everyone who joined. And I hope to see you next week. Hey, Matt, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. Again, really, I really, really appreciate it. Um, and that's it. 
I will see you next time. Have a great weekend. And yeah, cheers. Ciao. Ciao, 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 ciao.